Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'll be talking on uh, femoral acetabular uh, impingement. This was a term. Thank you. This was a terminology which uh, none of us were aware of about 10 years back. But now, over the last uh, five to 10 years, uh, this is a very favorite topic among the hip surgeons. So I'll. Uh, even though we used to talk about the uh, impingement between the femoral and acetabular component, I think uh, when you get when as far as the trainees are concerned, if you get a topic sh or a short notes on femoral acetabular impingement, you should be talk, uh, talking on the current thinkings of uh, what, what happens in a normal hip with this particular situation when there when there's an impingement. So if you define femoral acetabular impingement, it is when the head of the neck of the femur, when it abuts against the rim of the acetabulum, that's what we call as impingement. It is uh, rather a dynamic disorder in which there, which results in uh, soft tissue damage because of this abnormal motion. We all know that uh, hip pain, uh, uh, one of the reasons for the hip pain is a labral tear. The, we are talking about hip pain in young individuals or active individuals less than say uh, 60 or 50 years uh, when arthritic changes has not occurred. So that's the situation when we have to suspect a femoral acetabular impingement. And also impingement uh, can lead on to uh, labral tear which has been well documented especially in uh, non-dysplastic hip. In dysplastic hip we, we are very well aware that because of the abnormal anatomy there is there is some amount of uh, labral impingement. So this uh, mechanism of this impingement has been uh, greatly studied by the Gans and their group from Switzerland. So they have done tremendous work uh, about more than uh, 600 cases of hip dislocation and trying to correct these uh, impingement mechanisms. Uh, what they have noticed is that this impingement, uh, the hip with this impingement uh, can lead on to early osteoarthritis and most of this impingement occurs when the hip goes in for goes into the terminal flexion and rotation and they coined the term the cancer and the pincer uh, lesions in the hip. So I'll come to individually all these things. So uh, uh, there are literature out there which clearly tells us that there is some chondral damage which is associated with this femoral acetabular impingement and uh, damage to the acetabular rim especially labral tear which can lead on to osteoarthritis. So the papers are out there which correlate this femoral acetabular impingement with osteoarthritis. The exact etiology is not known but it, we, we, when we, we don't know much about a particular thing we call them idiopathic. Uh, definitely it may be a part of the early osteoarthritis findings which we are coming to be aware of or it could be a mild degree of slipped capital femoral epiphysis or there might be an element of genetic or traumatic involvement for this impingement. These are a few angles I think as far as the femoral acetabular impingement is concerned we have to know. One is the, as, as you all know this is the center edge ankle where you draw a line from the center of the hip vertically up and another line from the center of the hip to the edge of the acetabulum. In a normal situation it should be uh, more than 20 degrees uh, in a normal hip. If it is less than 20 it, should, it clearly tells us that the head is uh, kind of exposed and it is a dysplastic kind of head. The other ankle is the alpha ankle where uh, this is an MRI picture where you draw a cent, uh, line along the center of the neck into the center of the head. You make a peripheral, uh, you uh, draw a circle around the periphery of the uh, head and a line from the center of the head to the edge of the head neck junction. So in normal situations it should be less than 50 degrees. The minute it, it is more than 50 degrees it indirectly, is, indirectly tells us that the neck head offset is uh, it's altered. The other uh, ankle which has been kind of measured is known as the triangular index which can be read off from a normal x-ray which may be might quite useful to us in our OPD when we initially take only x-rays. What they try to do is uh, they take the, uh, they, uh, they try to find out the radius of the femoral head and try to draw a triangle and then uh, try to measure the R. So that gives you some indication where there is uh, altered anatomy there. So what exactly is this femoral acetabular impingement? This is as, uh, just to tell you the main two uh, impingements are the cam impingement and the pincer impingement. In cam impingement there is a bony bump near the head neck junction which impinges at the edge of the acetabulum in flexion and internal rotation. The pincer is where the edge of the acetabulum, the head may be normal and the uh, edge of the acetabulum impingements against the neck. But for all practical purpose what uh, Gans and this group has noticed is that most of the patients have a combined lesion that is both a cam and a pincer lesion. 
So this is a photograph of a 40 year old lady with a hip pain which was not relieved by conservative treatment. When you take an x-ray you see that bony bump or the deformity over there and in the same patient when an MRI was taken it clearly showed a labral tear. So when you look at it in another perspective like an axial oblique perspective, uh, usually the cam lesions they have a pistol uh, grip deformity kind of head and the impingement usually occurs in flexion where it impinges against the edge of the acetabulum which leads on to crushing of the acetabulum and further damage into the articular cartilage and uh, leading on to osteoarthritis. In a pincer lesion, the shape of the head may be normal but the edges of the acetabulum impinges against the neck which again can lead on to the same mechanism of damage to the labrum and leading on to the damage of the cartilage. The pincer lesions are more commonly seen in females than in males. Another uh, factor which we have to keep in mind when you look at these x-rays is the acetabular version. If there is a femoral retroversion, you can see the Uh, you see the crossover sign uh, in the right uh, uh, right side of the picture where uh, the anterior edge of the acetabulum impinges against the neck. The combined lesion is something what, uh, yeah, thank you. The combined lesion is something uh, where you have both a uh, cam lesion and a pincer lesion and there is something known as a contra coup mechanism. When the uh, head and the neck impinges against the anterior rim, the whole head gets compressed onto the posterior aspect and uh, it gives something known as a contra coup mechanism which has also been described. So coming on to the symptoms, the most of these patients are young adult. They have uh, this deep inter intermittent growing discomfort during or, or after the activity. In a typical CAM symptoms, it is again the pain in the groin. Uh, the pain is especially with repetitive hip flexion activities. Sprinting or kicking sports can give rise to pain. Especially climbing uh, up stairs or going uh, up a hill gives them the pain. And also the low chairs uh, gives them the, uh, especially while this low, the seat, I mean the cars with the bucket seat where they get in and out of the car, it gives them typical pain in the hip. And sometimes the pain is referred to the thigh or symphysis pubis or into the uh, ipsilateral testicle. The pincer lesion also has the same kind of symptoms as a cam lesion but sometimes if you are suspecting a posterior impingement they might have pain in the buttock or the sacroiliac joint. It's much more commonly seen in uh, females. Uh, some of them, uh, we know the classical features of a labral tear in, uh, in hip, they classically uh, complaints of a catching or a clicking sensation or a giving way. Again, it's a part of the impingement. And when you examine this patient, the classical test described is the flexion, adduction and internal rotation of the hip. The patient uh, which reproduces the same pain what the patient is suffering from. If you have a posterior impingement, sometimes hyperextension, you bring the patient to the edge of the table and hyperextend the hip and give a small external rotation. What we are trying to do is impinge the posterior aspect of the head against the, uh, against the posterior part. The Faber test or the flexion, abduction, external rotation test is also useful. But you should also realize that that is done more for, uh, more for uh, uh, sacroiliac joint pathology too. So the manage, sorry. So the management uh, of the femoral acetabular impingement, we have the, we have to manage the mechanical problem. Sometimes conservative treatment, they classically tells you that uh, the physiotherapy or the stretching or the yoga ex exercise makes their pain worse. So in those situations, one of the options is surgical correction. Uh, the open surgical uh, technique described by the GANS group where they dislocate of the head, uh, head and then reshape the rim and then uh, reduce it. So in their hands they did not have uh, vascular necrosis and also the results have been uh, satisfying for them. Hip dislocation, the, what we should be worried about telling our patient is the chances of a vascular necrosis is quite high when you do an open surgery. But if you are an experienced arthroscopic surgeon, definitely an arthroscopic um, uh, clearance of this bump cam mechanism is extremely useful. This is how it is usually done. That is the hip uh, arthroscopy on the uh, right hand side is the head of the femur and that is the head neck junction where you can use a burr and try to shapen that up. And once you shape it up, you can remove quite a bit of the head and there are studies which have shown up to 30 percentage of the neck can be removed even uh, without causing too much of uh, um, uh, weakness in the neck. Uh, 
Okay, this is how it looks like after the surgery. The cam has been uh, removed uh, and that's the x-ray picture. So the current concepts are um, uh, definitely some of the thoughts among these hip surgeons who treat a lot of these patients are that labral refixation is definitely better than just debriding with a scope and removing the labrum. And uh, treating the uh, structural deformity alone uh, uh, may not be useful. Open surgery is as good as an arthroscopic surgery unless you are a very skilled hip arthroscopic surgeon. And uh, surgically induced acetabular dysplasia, like if you ruin too much of a uh, edge of the acetabulum, it, it, it has consistently given poor results. Some of the unanswered questions are that we don't know what causes these bony abnormalities. The mechanism, uh, it's, a, it's a mechanical uh, cause which caused that. And definitely whether your surgery, is it going to prevent secondary osteoarthritis in the long term, 10 years, 20 years down the line, which we don't know. But definitely in future with a lot of uh, uh, newer studies and different modalities to look into these uh, hips, probably in future we might have better data on how to treat these patients. Thank you very much.